Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to discuss a new method that we can use to detect emotion in sentence and text using something called LSTM, which stands for Long Short Term Memory. It's a type of neural network actually that's really good at underst understanding sequence of data, like sentence. It used a lot in things like language translation and text generation. LSTM when it's locked to sentence, it read it from start to finish, which like most of the human doing. But to make it better, we are adding something called bidirectional on top of it, bidirectional LSTM. It takes the idea step further. Instead of just looking at words in one direction from start to finish, it looked to the words both forward and backward. It helps us to capture more context from the surrounding words. So I want you to imagine this, that we're trying to understand the meaning of word in sentence. Sometimes words that come after, it gives us a clue. And sometimes a word before it, it does that. A bidirectional LSTM make you sure you're not missing any of these clues. It's like reading story. You get the full meaning of it by reading forward and backward. All right, let's start talking about our code. I will gonna leave, of course, the entire code link in description in the GitHub repo with data set that we, you're gonna use this time. First thing, uh, we have a couple of steps. I'm gonna walk you through it and explain it by details, everyone. But the first thing we're going to do is importing our library, then load our data set, then tokenize every word in the sentence, then doing something called badding. It's very simple to explain it. Then word embedding. If you know about it, it's also very simple. Then I'm going to start by preparing our model for by creating one hot encoding functionality and the split the test data set using sklearn. Then create our model using the Kiris uh, library, which is very simple also. Then going to evaluate it, save our model that we created. Then we're going to do a prediction using our model. So let's start with the first thing. Importing the libraries that we're going to use. We're using Keras as a neural network library. NumPy, sklearn, pandas, and LTK. The second thing, we are loading our data set. Uh, I got the international survey on emotion, antecedent, and reactions. Uh, chart of I is E E R. I am loading with panda. And I am replacing the first two columns for myself by emotion and text. And with, of course, using, I always love to see the first five rows. It's like um, a tradition. Then I'm getting the info. One of the warnings that I got about this data said that it have no response in some of its uh, rows. So I got the index using Banda and I removed it. Third step is tokenization for uh i i don't i don't don't know why but tokenization is very simple it's basically the wording like you have sentence as three words basically three token it's very simple as i wrote here a tokenization is a by word tokenizer to convert each sentence into a list of words if a sentence i am said which is three words after tokenization it will be a list of three word I and M said. So we're going to select the column that we work on, which is thickest. Let's believe the first emotion. Then we're going to tokenize it using word tokenizing. And we get this, a list of the word inside the sentence. But in NLB, we can't use it. We have to add something called badding. It's adding extra space or symbols to make sentences in a data set have the same links. This is a very important for training. I uh, wrote here the definition of it, a symbol definition of it. And bedding is, is a straightforward, is a function that will loop over uh, or text and give it a bad in term of if it's short. If it's short, it's given a bad until it reached a hundred. Uh, I'm, so I'm looping over the emotion array that I created and do the bedding for it. And here is the first thing. Let's run it here. Basically, this is bedding. Okay, let's look at the fifth step 
which is word embedding using love. Before we start, I want to that we need to embed every word that we have in text so the model can understand. The model doesn't understand text, it does understand only number. Computer is actually still dumb. They understand only numeric. So we changing every word that we have to a number. We are doing this. We are using a 15 number vector called a glove vectors. I got it from the internet Kegel. I'm going to leave the link in the description for it. Of course, this collection is only English word and each row of this glove that we have have a format certain, a certain format is a word, then the numbers that represent it. So here I am going to open this file and look for each line and split it the word on the, the take the word. Then I took the represented number first and I put it in this uh, dictionary. And for simple sake, I'm looking at happy. This is the represented for the word happy. It's a lot of number. Then we go into loop over our text that we have and we gonna give it the same treatment. And we gonna give each word that we have the represented numbers that, that we get from our glove uh, representer. That's embedding is super simple. It's basic representing each word with a, it's a unique number. Then we're going to do a hot encoding and split tree in data set. If you are been doing NLP for a while, creating any kind of model, you done the split data set training like a thousand times. One hot encoding is simply set it is making the emotion have um, a represented number from negative one to one and make it an array. This is going to be our Y and LX. This is the embedding that we created here. The embedded emotion array list that we created. Then we're going to start to split our data set. X and Y, and you know the stuff because I think you have done it before. X and Y using the SQLearn, and we are using a size of test 20%. Okay, I want you to focus with me just for a minute. I'm going to explain this function line by line. We're starting by creating a function, I'm going to have it, and we're going to give it a couple of parameters. And we're going to use this parameter in creating our neural network, which is our model. This sequence still basically sequence till is basically creating our neural network. And we're going to call it M. Then we're going to add on top of it a new layer, which is bidirectional LSTM with 100 neuro. How many neuron is our networks? And we pass it to our input data. We give it two different input sizes. Then we're going to do another layer and we're going to call it dropout. The dropout layer is like randomly turning off some of this connection between the neurons and the previous layer during the training. It helps us to prevent the model from becoming too specialized and overfitting our data. We're dropping a 15%. Then we are adding dense layer. The dense layer, it means that all our neurons in this layer are connected to the all neurons from the previous layer. We have something called output size. This specifically, this specifies the number of the neurons in this layer. And we're going to pass how many neurons that we want in this layer uh, from, from outside. And we adding something called activation softmax. This part mean the output of this layer will be turned into probabilities for each class. And here, lastly, which is a little bit confusing, I read it in the documentation. This we are telling here our model how it should be trained. We're using something called the Adam optimizer, a type of algorithm that adjusts the model weight during the training. Using then the categorical chorus in strawberry, I think it's called, uh, is a loss function. How far of the prediction from our actual values? 
and we want to track the accuracy during the training here. We tracking the accuracy during the training so it can be optimized by Adam. This is a, the beauty of neural networks actually. And last thing, this is the easiest line. We are fitting our model here by X and Y and eBooks by 20. Basically, this is how many times that our model will look our, to our data. It's in batch size of 128 uh, batch size of text. Then returning MSU can use it. We're basing the entire function here to a BLSTM model. And we're gonna pass through it the stuff that we uh, set it here, X and Y. And the input one is 100 and the input two is 15 and our both size is seven with the amount that we talked about in the density layer, how many connected uh, neurons here uh, is basically seven. Then I'm already trained our model. It took me a while, not a lot of time, but it took me a while to train it. After it's done, I'm going to save it, of course. It's very simple. You call whatever, what model that you want to call it. I'm then going to use this pass to save our model inside it. After I'm done, I created a summary. I wanted to see how many parameter our model look at, the shape, and all the stuff. It's, it's, it's in total parameters, 122, 27, running evaluation on top of our model. Okay, let's evaluate our text and my test. Okay, here is a 100. Okay, the accuracy is 45. Okay, and losses is 1.5. Okay. And last thing that we're going to talk about is predicting using our model. I am creating a process to input text, tokenize the text, or tokenize this that we did in top, bedding, embedding, simple function. Then we pass for, through it this sentence I'm feeling happy today. And we process this data and take this input and put it into our model to predict it. Okay. So here we gonna process the input. Then we gonna get something called the props. Is how many emotion detected inside this text and we put it given into an by arg max given us the index of the highest argument here and down there you can see the props 0 1 2 3 and 4 4 is the highest one which is the index of it and we pass it to our encoder that we created uh, on top and we get this input uh, output and we get this output the predicted emotion is joy and this all the perversity that we get this is it that we created our nlst model based by the international neural network from the ground you can take this step further by creating more training time playing with different data set even use something uh, data set like go emotion but this how you create an uh, by the direction of STM model from the ground up. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new in this video and see you in the next video when we're gonna tackle birth.